It's time to start building beehives. I'm really nervous. So today you're gonna see me and my brother Michael build three insulated 20 frame horizontal hives. Hey guys, I'm Elizabeth, the curly haired country gal. Now we're working towards raising 100% of our own food so that we can have affordable pasture raised meat and better than organic produce. So, so far we have chickens, rabbits, an orchard, a food forest, and a very sad raised bed. But I know you're here for the bees. So this is my first year of beekeeping, specifically natural beekeeping using horizontal hives as opposed to the standard Langstroth hives. Dr. Leo Sharashkin set me up for success at his March workshop in Kabul, Missouri. And as of today, I have five colonies. And you can check out my beekeeping playlist to see how all of those came to be. So from that March workshop, I came home with three insulated hives, which are now the Freedom Hive, the Sun and Moon Hive, and the Umbrella Hive. And I'm very glad that I bought those, even though it was a significant financial investment, so that I could see what was going on with it, how it worked, and, and what the pieces were. But as of now, 2022, this is July, those are running $450 or $500 new. And I definitely want to expand my apiary, but that is not financially sustainable for us. As far as the cost goes, I wanted to give you an idea of how much these cost to build. So one insulated hive from Dr. Leo costs 500, or if you purchase three, they're 450 each, including the frames. Now I don't have frames yet and I'm gonna need to make them, which is another scary project that I'm gonna have to embark on later. But the total was roughly 350 plus uh, I had to purchase some of the water-based spar urethane as the seal and I ran out of the flex seal so I had to purchase more of that but I would say that it was right around the $400 mark for all three hives. Purchasing three more from Dr. Leo would have been about $1,350 so I was still able to spend a third of what I would have on um, purchasing them new. With the caveat that I Again, I need to make the frame still, so that's going to be an additional expense of the lumber and the jig. So, despite the fact that I strongly prefer more forgiving projects, like raising food in compost that I make here, I knew I needed to embark on this and give it a try, even though I was really scared. <laughs> so, as you watch this, just know that I am an amateur carpenter, but I hope that you gain confidence watching this, knowing that you can build your own hives, and you'll continue to learn things as you go. I know I did. So without further ado, let's do this thing. So we're just following Dr. Leo's instructions here and step one is just to make the cuts. So I have this fine finish blade. I couldn't easily find one that was a 3 30 seconds kerf blade. So I'm really hoping this works, but we're gonna see how it goes. And Jared used the micrometer to see how wide it was. And it looks like it's 330 seconds. It also s seemed like this one that was already in the table saw was the same width, but we both thought that having a fine finished blade would still be better, so he's installing right. that now. Okay. And I've got my fearless brother here helping me. This is moving super slowly, but we're, we're, we're getting the hang of it. I already made my first mistake. When I looked at this quadrant for one piece of plywood, I did not take X into consideration, and we just made two cuts through where X was gonna be because I was just gonna divide it. I thought that it was one sheet of plywood was all for A. So just carefully look at this. <laughs> I've been looking at it carefully, but uh, that's something to keep in mind. So I, I cut through the X's, but we're f finishing up the A's now. The A's are cut and labeled. So this X piece should all be one piece, but I messed it up. So I just have two pieces that make the, the uh, length. We'll see if I can splice it together later, but here are the X's. Now I'm working on this piece of plywood up here. We just cut the widths for C, B, and K, and L. 
I almost made a mistake again. I did the first cut, which is 14 and 7 16 and then the next one I almost did 31 and 7 8 which is the width of it instead of the height. So again, just make sure. I, I was looking at it and I thought, ah, oh, that doesn't look quite right. Right? <laughs> These precise measurements are not my forte, but so far I think it's going okay. the most difficult to cut from step one were the K's and Z's and X's because they were longer than 32 inches which is what my saw my table saw goes out to with a support so that one I had to kind of eyeball and just do as straight as I could so you might have a different table saw set up but that was the most difficult part for me so step one is complete we've cut all the plywood and now I'm moving on to step two and I'm gonna be uh, ripping these two by fours complete so I have all of my pieces I even laid them all out just like Dr. Leo did. So the next step is actually to cut a dotto in parts G and H but I would like to get all the cutting done first so I think I'm gonna skip to step 20 where we cut the one by sixes and the, the one by six by eight and the one by six by six. Unfortunately I just made mistake number two these are the T pieces, or they are supposed to be, and they're supposed to be 16 and 15 sixteenths long, and I made them 16 and 5 sixteenths long, so I'm going to have to uh, keep cutting. <laughs> Step 20 is complete. I jumped ahead to get all the cutting done at once. Here's what W, U, F, and the T pieces look like. These are for the lid of the hive. So on the supply list, G through R are the 2x4s, and W through T are the 1x. And while I was cutting, my daughter was so sweet to decorate this board for me, and she put John 316 on it. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. John 316. Now it's time to go to step three and cut the dados, G and H. So we're going to do our best without using the table saw. For this dado, it's supposed to start one and twenty-seven thirty seconds from the edge, which I think I have. And then it needs to go a quarter inch. And it's going to be a quarter inch deep. So to get the blade three quarters of an inch high, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put this F piece down by the blade and line it up because I know this is three quarters of an inch tall, so I'm going to try that. I actually just realized I could just set this to 1 and 27, 30 seconds. Some people have mentioned not to trust your your measurement here, but this has been really accurate today, so I'm feeling comfortable with that. Dados are proving kind of difficult for me. I got this one a little bit too big and a little bit too deep. So I think I finally got the blade at the right height, at right at three quarters of an inch. And then on the other side, at the other side, I think I did a good job getting it square and 
I think that's pretty good. I know this this uh, project isn't super forgiving. It might not be super forgiving with messing up with that, but hopefully I'm not too far off. I have the blade set at 1 and 27 30 seconds, which is the outside of the dado, and then I'll set it to the inside of the dado and then connect them. So I just cut three quarters of an inch in at one and 27, 30 seconds for all the outsides. So now I'm gonna adjust it three quarters of an inch for the width of the gap of the dado and uh, go from there. Here were my first couple, too big, bigger than three quarters of an inch. But here is the one I just did, looking much better, getting there. Nice, pretty, pretty close. The dados are done! And like Mikey just said, we don't have to wear our glasses anymore, and I can take my earplugs out. Let's see how they're looking. Nice! A little tiny bit of wiggle room there, but uh, especially for my first time, I am totally happy with this. I hope it works. <laughs> so I thought I was all done making the cuts, but then Mikey just pointed out to me that we have to get more of the pieces from the 2x4. I only did enough for one hive of those. But I'm taking Dr. Leo's advice and we're gonna take a little break and not work too hard. It's getting hot out there, so time for a little break. Break time is over. Meanwhile, my kiddos have been making a house they want to show me. Wait, what is that? That's the drying rack. Okay. And that's a sheet and that's the bath stand. And that's a little statue and that's the door. And where's the computer? Oh, right there. We didn't check in on ah. it. The phone right there. We're pretending it's a mouse. Excellent. So now we're on step four of notching all the A's. So I just did this first one. It looks uh, pretty good on the front, except just because of the shape of the blade, it kind of digs into it a little bit to complete the notch. I'm not too worried about it though. Looking pretty good over here. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that for all of the A's. And then step five is to do that for all of the C's. After step five, you'll be all done with the cutting, I believe. I'll correct myself if I'm wrong there. So I think we're gonna pause, I gotta go make some dinner, and then we'll uh, hopefully come back out tonight and finish all the cutting, and then tomorrow we can put the saw away and start assembly! Good job, Mikey! He's been a great help today. I haven't finished cutting the C's because I'm a little confused about it. I'm gonna ask on the lay-ins group tonight. It says for step four to notch three, 13 sixteenths wide, but then for part C on step five, it says to notch one and three sixteenths wide. So I just want to confirm that because in the picture, it sure looks like it's the same width. So I wonder if that's a typo and it's supposed to be 13 sixteenths, or if it is actually supposed to be one inch, inch deeper. It sure doesn't look like it, so I'm going to check on that before I make the cuts, because this is what mine is looking like. I didn't get it quite right, because it's not quite as tall as it should be. But anyway, that's, uh, that's not looking quite right. Okay, so we just finished dinner. I'm going to get back to finishing the cutting, and I just checked on the lay-ins group. Hey, is this a typo? Is it supposed to be 13 sixteenths of an inch, or is it supposed to be 1 and 3 sixteenths? And one of the moderators said, yes! It's supposed to be that way, just trust the plan. So I'm trusting the plan and I'm gonna finish doing the cuts. Okay, so I accidentally did this incorrectly. So hopefully I didn't, didn't blow it too bad. I might have to fill it in with something. But instead of one and three sixteenths, I did 
1 and 9 sixteenths. I accidentally did what I was supposed to do deep. I did it wide. So thankfully this is the only one I've done so far. So for the rest of these, I'm going to make sure to do it. Okay, these are done. So this was my first piece that was not very well done. This is the correct width but I cut it too deep. Now one small note if you're new to woodworking like I am, it's kind of, you can see more of a groove in there than there should be because of the curvature of the blade. So I figured that it would help to put the blade a lot higher so that the curvature is a lot um, more shallow, but when the blade was lower there was more of a curvature. So anyway. Just something you could keep in mind when you're making yours. So this is my first one. Then the rest have much less of that curvature overlap. And uh, and the cutting is all done. Wahoo! Can I get a wahoo? Wahoo! Thank you. Now this was probably the most dangerous part of the cutting so far. Because as these pieces were loose right here in the blade, they kind of got stuck right in there. And at one point I thought, oh, I'll just keep cutting because I didn't want to stop. And so I put a second board up there and a second piece kind of got lodged up there. And the first one shot back very quickly toward the wall. And it would have hurt very badly if I had gotten hurt or if somebody else was sitting back here. So just be careful with those little notches that you get out. <laughs> so step five is complete. And I think we're done with the table saw and on to putting things together. Okay, on to step six, combining G and H. So if I remember correctly from the directions, all the joints need to be glued and nailed. So we're going to start on that. We have a nail gun, but it's only a brad nailer, and there's one other kind we have. So we're actually going to be using nails on this. So uh, we're going to start nailing it together. These masonry nails are not doing the job that I need them to. The head is just kind of sticking out. I tried pre-drilling a hole and that did not help. These are an inch long, but they're not biting into the wood enough. So I'm going to go ahead and just use screws. I tried one pre-drilling with this one and a quarter inch construction screw. So I'm just going to go ahead and use these. I'm going to use the impact driver so it's nice and flush and hope for the best, I guess. what frame is done here. I happened to pick up some clamps so I'm going to go ahead and clamp it while we work on the next one. So we're going to glue, pre-drill, and screw the holes. Okay, step six is complete for all three frames. On to step seven. So we're going to put B onto one of these frames we just made. Okay, so while we're working on step seven, somebody has a sawdust castle going on over here. Very nice. Don't break it. <laughs> Lovely. We're on step seven, part B, which is filling these with insulation. I think it's supposed to be 10 pounds of insulation per hive. I'm not exactly sure how much to put in here by weight, but I'm just going to kind of fill it like Dr. Leo Aww. has in here where it's pretty full, I guess. I was able to pick up almost 50 pounds of wool for about 5.30 a pound. Just ask around, especially on your homesteading Facebook groups. A lot of times people have sheep and they don't even do anything with the wool, so you can just ask. It's a 
success. So now we're going to go ahead and move to step eight, which is covering what we just did with board M. It feels like things are moving right along. We are now at step nine, which is to put walls A and basically start closing it up. So we're gonna put A up, which is the length, the long walls. And then immediately following with step 10 is putting C up against it. And he makes a note to say that C is a little bit taller than A. Uh, I'm not sure why yet. Maybe the frames hang on that. So I'm running into a couple problems here. This part that I'm attaching is pretty thin and the screws are starting to split it and the nails are splitting it. So I'm gonna go ahead and try the nail gun we have. This is just supposed to be finished nails so I don't know that it's gonna work. So I did just try this nail gun and it did work. So we're gonna go ahead and stick with that for these thinner walls, right? This isn't perfect, but I'm definitely gaining confidence with this. Right down here, it's not flush, unfortunately, but everything at the top is flush, so I think that just means there's going to be a little of a little extra room down there in the corner. I missed some nails from the nail gun that I'm going to have to take out, but overall, I'm happy with how it's going. Okay, we have reached the end of day one. I Part of me wants to just keep working, but we're, we're starting to lose daylight, even though it might not look like it. It's about 8.20 now. So we're at the beginning of day two, and I wanted to check the dimensions for what Dr. Leo recommends and what I have. For the interior length, it's supposed to be 13 and 3 quarters of an inch. Mine is looking like just under 13 and, a, and 3 quarters. A frame does fit in it. I'm hoping that's still going to be good. The interior width, he says, is supposed to be 31 and 7 eighths. And mine is just a hair over 32, which shouldn't be a problem because more length isn't going to be an issue. So two of my kids are up, but my brother is still sleeping, so I'm going to do my best by myself to keep working on steps 9 and 10, putting up the walls. Okay, so steps 9 and 10 are done. The part I'm least happy about is right here. There was a gap in between this A piece and this C piece. So I just kind of put a little shim in it. A frame still fits in it, thankfully, but I made it flush on the inside so it wouldn't mess that up. And then um, I, I think I'm probably going to have to fill that in with something as I go. We're on to step 11. We are securing the, ele the S pieces to the edge of the C pieces, nice and flat, gluing it, clamping it, and we're going to screw these in. Okay, so I'm a little confused with step 12. It says to attach R along the top of A. But it says glue and staple A into R. The ends of R are flush with S, so I get that. I'm a little puzzled on securing R into A because it doesn't overlap very much. So I guess I'm just going to use the nail gun and we'll screw, screw R into S. We have a little bit of a gap here, so the boards aren't perfectly aligned the way they're supposed to be. But still, I'm, I'm thinking it's going to work. <laughs> this 
first attempt did come out, so I just have to go a little straighter, I guess. My imperfections are showing here. This S doesn't line up perfectly with R. So what we're going to do for next time is before we secure this together, we're going to go ahead and shave off some of S if we need to, to make sure that can be flush. We did go ahead and pull this S piece back off, and I've got about a, an, I don't know, an eighth of an inch or so to shave off. So I'm going to do that before gluing it next time. This has been a little tricky for me. I put a few nails too high, a few too low that are sticking through the wood. So I'm getting the hang of where to use this nail gun. But other than that, it's secured nicely. We filled that gap. I went too far here and I split it. So I put some wood glue in there and we're going to clamp it and that happened on this side too. So I'm just going to try to go a little slower next time. Step 14 is to secure E on top of H and we'll eventually drill through this for the entrance to the hive when we're done. Okay, so for step 14 it says that if E is protruding past H down here that you need to find, file it down. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and use the table saw to shave off that uh, 3 sixteenths of an inch or so. And then it says in the directions to only attach four staples for now from A into E so that you're not interfering with where the entrance holes are going to go. So first I'll shave off that part of E. This is step 15, we're attaching P onto E on the panel on part A, connecting it up to part R. So at least on some of these, I'm going to have to shave off part of the outer edge of P. Yeah, so I'm going to do that. Now for N, just like with the P's, the N is going to be supporting the back. So I'm going to have to shave off a little bit from this one as well because it's sticking out the bottom and the top a little bit when I put it in there. The ends are now on. So I did find that it's a lot easier to use the nail gun and put a nail in it when it's on the ground so I can see down. So I was able to do that with this one. And then the next step, 16, which is to fill it up with insulation and start closing it up. So the next step is to take these L's and line it up. It's supposed to be flush with S and then go ahead and put the insulation in it. Now it seems like what I'm learning is that you have to be, I mean, you have to be precise with all the cuts. But you have to really be sure that your S has the correct measurements because I had to shave off the side of some of the S's but now that I'm about to put it on here it's supposed to be flush and it's not quite, it's pretty close but it's not quite flush. It's going to make it so there's a little gap there between the R and the L. So yeah just make sure your S's especially are, are really good. completed step 16 of putting the L pieces on, but then I remembered somebody had an excellent idea of including handles on the side, and so I should have done that before securing the L part, and so I just made a little note up here that if you're going to put handles on, that's going to be step 15 
B, and that's going to be to put some boards in or uh, against the C piece resting on the H piece. So it's going to go, it's going to slide in there and be secured so that we can then put the handle on the outside and, and screw it to something really secure. So I'm going to use some sort of rod to just move that wool out of the way and then slide this down and secure it. And then we'll go ahead and finish closing it up. I labeled these uh, K, these first three K boards front so that I can make sure to know where that E board is that we're going to drill through for the entrance. Unfortunately on this edge is not looking great. So this plywood doesn't even overlap with the edge. So thankfully there's going to be a brace on that that it's at least going to cover that up. But I'm, I'm probably still going to like fill that in somehow. So that's a bummer. So my measuring and cutting was, was off there. And it's pretty close on this side. A little bit of an overhang still. Step 18 is done. And these are starting to look like hives. Now again, not perfect. There are some things I'm going to have to fill in. There's some, I don't know, kind of quirky spots. But still, I'm really happy with it. Now, again, some of these were not coming together very well, some of these edges. But I did realize on the last couple that if, you, if we held them in and put a lot of pressure on it before we stapled it, it would get them in. So that, that is something you can do if your measurements are a little bit off like mine. You can still kind of push it together. But I tried all of them with a frame, and the frames fit um, across the whole length in all of them so now i think we're going to start we're going to drill the holes for the entrances right right so now we're on step 19 which is drilling the entrance holes We ran into a little bit of a problem here because I didn't measure well enough. It's supposed to be three inches up and we started at more like two and a half and so we're getting down into where the wool is. So we'll figure out what we're doing with that. Okay, so it's not going to look the prettiest right now, but we decided to just go ahead and drill a new hole. So this one might actually be a little high, which is better than low. So we're just going to fill that in and just go with the new hole. Okay, we're just about done with step 19 and my brother said, hey, we should take a break. And look at that. We're gonna follow Dr. Leo's advice. When we get back, we're gonna finish putting the holes in this last hive and then put some staples around the entrance. So I'll show you that when we're done and then it's gonna be time to make the lid. We already completed step 20, which was to cut out all the pieces for the lid. But we haven't done 21 yet, so now I need to cut the rabbits on W, and then we're going to be drilling holes in U for ventilation. He's marking the lines to drill the drainage slash ventilation holes on U. And then for the rabbits, what I need to cut out is a, a 3 eighths of an inch up um, and 3 quarters of an inch wide. So I think what I'm going to do is set the blade at three quarters of an inch and then I think I can just run it through vertically and then flip it around and do the same thing on the other side. So 
So I have all the pieces cut three quarters of an inch in on both sides. So now I set the blade to three eighths of an inch. I just kind of eyeballed it based on what this looked like. So I'll try it once and then I set this to three quarters of an inch. And so then I'll go ahead and finish cutting that rabbit out. Michael here is putting the angled holes into you for ventilation. <laughs> Those look like dinosaur tracks. Oh yeah. <laughs> so the last part of step 22 is to go ahead and secure the insect screen across the inside of what he's working on with the U's. So with the screen, at Home Depot, I was able to find the wire mesh. They had a big long roll of the metal stuff, but I didn't want a big long roll of it. They had just a patch that was like $9 just for the patch, but then they had this screen that was $8 for a replacement screen. So I thought that was perfect. So I got this and I'm just gonna cut out what I need from it. So I got the first part of the screen cut out and I'm just gonna make two inch by two inch squares. So we just made 24 of these screens. While Mikey is working on putting the screen on the U pieces, I'm working on step 23, which is to go ahead and connect the U pieces to the W with the rabbits with two screws each, making sure that the bottom edge of both of them is the same on both sides to frame up the lid. Okay, so the first frame of step 23 is done and we're gonna, I'm gonna go ahead and do it for the other two hives. I forgot to put the wood glue in the seams of this one that I just finished. So don't forget the wood glue, I'll do that on the other ones. So we finished step 23. And now 24 is to attach X and Z. Here's Z and X to the top of the lid here. So we're gonna glue it and uh, either screw it or nail it all around. Now this is where I messed up from the first piece of plywood that I cut. So I'm gonna have to figure out how to secure the rest of X together. And mine again, it doesn't line up Perfectly. If I match up this corner, and then if I try to match up this corner, that doesn't quite line up, but it's pretty close. So we'll just have to kind of mask that or trim it. I might just need to trim it a little bit. Step 24 is complete. The first one was fine, and then for these second two where I messed up the X, I just put kind of a makeshift brace on the inside of it, attached to the wood, so that it would be supported. So that's looking pretty good. I'm just gonna, I was gonna use a, a rubber seal as the roof instead of aluminum, so I'm just gonna have to see what I'm gonna do with these screw holes first. I'm thinking that with these screw holes and with some or most or all of the screw holes in the hive as well as with the cracks that I'll put like a wood filler in there to cover those up and seal it up. I think for today we're ready to call it quits and go eat some yummy food and get back out here tomorrow to hopefully wrap up. Good morning! Here we are back at it on day three. We just cut this two and three eighths inch piece of scrap as a spacer and we're going to go ahead and move on to step 25 and secure 
F and T. There's the F and the T on the inside of the lid. So there it is completed. And we're gonna put this lid on. And it's on. Two more to go. So we finished the lids and the and two of them fit on the hive. Yay! However, this hive is a little wonky and this lid is not fitting on it. So I drew a line here of what needs to be shaved off and I'm thinking about just figuring out a way to run that through the circular saw or the table saw to get that trimmed down. Brainstorming. Okay, so this does shut now. We were able to use a chisel and hammer and a grinder for part of it to just kind of notch it out another eighth of an inch or so. And so now it closes. We just have to make sure to keep this lid with this hive. And now Mr. Mikey is cutting our aluminum angles for the corners. So we are on to step 94. 20. I guess we're kind of skipping up to step 28. So all the aluminum is cut. The directions say to cut it 18 and 13 16 I went ahead and just did 18 and a half uh, to make sure it got underneath that lid. And we're going to go ahead and use these files to clean up the edges of the aluminum that we cut that are pretty rough right now. I'm working on the rest of tw step 28 and I'm marking the holes one inch from the top, one inch from the middle, and one inch on the bottom of my aluminum strips. And Mikey is drilling them for me. I just today ordered the stainless steel entrances that I needed. I didn't get Dr. Leo's this time because they were quite a bit more expensive. I'm sure they're great quality. I got them online. Somebody in the Lands group recommended um, a source from Amazon. I don't normally like buying things from China, but I have to be a little bit economical with this. So step 26, it's a little bit hard to see there, but that is to go ahead and prime it and paint it. So what we're going to actually do now, I made a little note of 25B, is I'm going to just make a little paste with sawdust and my wood glue. And I'm going to fill in the cracks and, and plug up the screw holes uh, just to give it a nice finish. So my step 25B is complete. We're getting so close. And now we are going to start priming pretty soon. But actually first, instead of step 27, we're not gonna be putting aluminum on the bottom and top. I'm actually going to be using flex seal to seal the top.
Okay, the first coat is on. I have 32 ounces here, and this was supposedly supposed to cover 37.2 square feet. So I'm definitely gonna need to get more. Like I did with the hives, I should have filled in the holes first with some wood glue. So that's gonna show me exactly what I need to work on, what I need to do next time before putting a second coat on this, or where to fill in the gaps. I'm gonna need to fill in the holes and go ahead and put a, a second coat at least on those spots. So I went back through and filled in the holes with some more adhesive. And I'm gonna have to just do one more coat on this. So it's got a really nice rubbery finish, but I'm gonna go over it once more and do these sides that I didn't have enough for. So now it's time for a quick break and then we're gonna start priming them. And like some people have said, this is a pretty little waste. So this is what's left of the plywood. And most, some of the stuff in here is what's left of the two by fours. A lot of the slivers that uh, is gonna be turned into another project looks like. So this hive that you're going to see us transfer over was a swarm that was caught at some point, I don't even know when, over the past couple weeks. And it was at our friend's house and they had been out of town for a while so they hadn't been checking to see if there was a swarm in it. And I went down last weekend to put to take down the rest of the swarm traps and there were bees in it! So this morning, this is July 22nd, and this morning at 5 a.m. when it was the coolest part of the day, we went over to close it up and bring it home and we had hives to put it in too! So there you have it! We, I now have a total of six 20 frame insulated hives and they are not perfect. They have some quarks, they have some wonky corners and inside dimensions, but it's functional and it's going to work. The only thing I might do is save my purchased hives or hives in the future that are better. I might reserve those to do splits uh, because the divider boards in these ones are a little bit off. But still, I am so thankful for my brother's help and I'm so thankful that I now have more hives at a fraction of the cost.